The time is 10 a.m. and this is WKYT Midmorning. Two people are dead in Whitley County after they were hit by a train early today. Tensions may be running high at Georgetown College after a campus apartment was hit by bullets. And the Central Kentucky man gets a heartwarming surprise. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning and welcome in. It is Tuesday, September 6th. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Boy, that weekend was gorgeous. It the was. The extended holiday weekend. <laughs> right. And we were off yesterday. It flew by, no doubt about that, but it sure was easy to enjoy. Now the humidity returns. Yes, it <laughs> does. Notice? And, uh, you know, when that starts happening, you can also expect at least a chance of showers. Yeah. Let's check so. in with Mike and see what's uh, up out there. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, it's a good looking start, but like you guys were talking about, the heat is on. It's going to be on again this afternoon. Still humidity down just a bit. It's not extremely humid, uh, but you'll start to feel it the next couple of days. 78 degrees there in Frankfurt. We're near 80 degrees there in Lexington. We hit the afternoon right around 90. Muggy day in store. That goes for the next few days, but the rain does arrive like Bob was talking about later on this work week. I'm going to show you when that happens coming up. Thank you, and let's get to the news. First, this mid-morning, Kentucky State Police have confirmed that two people were hit and killed by a train in Whitley County. It happened shortly after 2 o'clock this morning. Details still limited, although we do have a crew at the scene gathering additional information right now. Investigators say it happened near Highway 26 in the Rock Olds community as the train tracks go near the roadway there. It's between Williamsburg and Corbin. Police say it is still unclear what led up to the incident. This is video of the emergency response there. According to a report by the Williamsburg News Journal, the two victims were residents of Williamsburg. And according to that story, Whitley County Coroner Andy Crowley says, based on conversations with the crew, the victims apparently were sleeping on the tracks there in the middle of the night. Again, we do have WKYT Sean Moody arriving on the scene. We'll have more, a full report coming up on WKYT News at noon. And as we get details on WKYT.com. Well, Georgetown College students headed back to class this morning with a heightened sense of security after somebody fired shots in an apartment complex on campus on Labor Day. Georgetown police say the bullet struck at least two apartments and ended up inside at least one of those units at Hambrick Village on campus. People living in the apartment say they aren't sure why someone would want to shoot their apartments, but they say they're thankful because it could have been much worse. One of my roommates, his bed is right on the other side of this wall. He's, lean, he's leaned up against the wall about probably about this high, so the bullet, if it had continued to go through, it would have, but it stops right here. Now, Georgetown police say they do have security that patrols in that area both on foot and in car, and they say they're now looking over security camera footage to see if they can find further details about what happened. A man is facing charges in connection to a shooting at a Lexington gas station. The victim is recovering from serious injuries after police say he was shot multiple times. That happened at the Marathon gas station on Trent Boulevard yesterday. Lexington police say a 35-year-old man was shot four times in the stomach and once in the head at one of the gas pumps. Police say he was rushed to UK hospital with life-threatening injuries. His current condition not known to us this morning. Police did arrest and Antonio Simpson following the shooting. Investigators say Simpson was not the shooter but knew the victim. He is charged with receiving a stolen firearm. Police in Mount Sterling say six people face charges after police broke up a large drug operation. A manager at the Mount Sterling Days Inn says he noticed a lot of people going in and out of a room, so he called police. Investigators say they found meth in that room. The six suspects have been charged with making and trafficking meth. This comes less than two weeks after police made arrests for a string of overdoses in Montgomery County. Now, some concerned citizens and county officials have formed a group to fight the county's drug problem. This goes to show that our police department is committed to uh, battling the dealers uh, as much as possible. Um, you know, it, it, it's something that you're never going to be able to really conquer, you know, but you can put a dent in it, and that's what we're trying to do here. The group called Montgomery County Adapt plans to hold a forum on fighting the recent drug epidemic at Montgomery County High School. It will be held September 15th. 
A second person is facing charges this mid-morning for a robbery in Whitley County. The sheriff's office there says deputies arrested Glennis Nance over the weekend. Investigators say he and Isaiah Canada robbed someone at knife point at the high top boat ramp last month there at Laurel Lake. The victim says the two men claimed that they were park rangers at the time. Deputies arrested Canada last week. They say they also found meth at Nance's home. We have some new information this morning about Kenneth Nance. The 20 year old man found in New Mexico with 15 year old Jenna Oakley. Now, the teen was reported missing shortly after her stepmother, Rhonda Oakley, was found dead in her home. The two were found in a stolen car at a Motel 6 parking lot in New Mexico Saturday. Nye was arrested and lodged in the Quake in the Quay County Detention Center, charged with one count of contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Now, according to the jail's website, Nye bonded out of jail this morning, but Kentucky State Police tell us he's still being held in police custody. We do, we'll have more on this developing story as we look into it, get additional details coming up on WKYT News at noon. Pulaski County, a Pulaski County man who says he put his heart and soul into creating a park was devastated when vandals damaged it earlier this summer. Glenn Wheeler helped create Wheeler Park and its softball fields decades ago. The vandals damaged the lights in the concession stands and stole some equipment. First time in 35 years I had been here. It broke my heart. But after the vandalism, Wheeler's family got together and surprised him by getting the fields back in shape. Wheeler says he is grateful for what they have done, and the family hopes the fields will be ready to go for the league's start of play again next summer. Good deed. Absolutely it is. An EKU student who has become well known for drawing Pokemon characters all around campus is at it again, and this time he's working on a much bigger project. Wiley Cottle has a new goal. He wants to draw all 151 original Pokemon characters on the Colonel's campus. Cottle says outside the King Johnson building is the perfect canvas for his artwork. As it turns out, that's also a pretty popular spot to play the game. Well, this is day two of President Obama's historic visit to Laos. The president was supposed to meet with the Philippine president, but the White House abruptly called it off after the leader publicly insulted the commander-in-chief. Instead, Mr. Obama is meeting his South Korean counterpart to discuss the North's latest ballistic missile launch. Well, the surge to the finish line is underway as Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump stump for votes today in key battleground states. Both candidates courted workers in Ohio yesterday, which is a very much a key state in the election, and they gave interviews with reporters aboard their private planes. Hannah Daniels has the latest on campaign 2016. Hillary Clinton enters the final stretch of the election season, promising the media greater access to her campaign. The Democratic nominee traveled aboard her new plane to Illinois and Ohio on Labor Day yesterday, this time with reporters eager to ask her about the FBI investigation into her email scandal. The fact I couldn't remember certain meetings doesn't in any way affect uh, the uh, commitment that I had and still have uh, to the uh, treatment of classified material. Clinton sought to keep the focus on Donald Trump and his alleged ties to Russia. He urged the Russians to hack more, in particular, hack me. She didn't have the energy to go to Louisiana, and she didn't have the energy to go to Mexico. Trump also invited reporters on board his private plane while in Ohio, where he refused to rule out amnesty for millions of undocumented immigrants. We're going to make that decision into the future, okay? And denied his foundation made a political contribution to Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi in 2013, when she was considering joining a fraud investigation into Trump University. I have a lot of respect for her. Never spoke to her about that at all. The Republican nominee now says he'll participate in all three presidential debates against Clinton, the first of which takes yes. place at the end of the Stand month. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. And Donald Trump will be campaigning in Virginia and North Carolina today, and Hillary Clinton will be holding a rally in Florida. Well, keep it right here this mid morning. Coming up, we're taking a look back at that exciting college football game last night. A thrilling moment for one special young fan. And Bridget Jones is back, meaning Renee Zellweger was back on the red carpet.
Bright blue skies right now, and it feels pretty decent outside, but it's going to heat up very rapidly as we approach the afternoon. I'm going to show you those numbers and also show you exactly when I expect that rain to come flying on through coming up. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We're at 79 degrees right now in Lexington, almost 80 degrees, and we're not even close to the noontime hour. We got about an hour and a half before we actually reach that. And it just shows you it's going to be heating up very rapidly. By the time we hit noon, it'll be 85, 86 degrees across portions of our area. So it's really going to heat up very rapidly. But remember that the humidity is down just like yesterday. Humidity is down once again today. The next couple of days it starts to rise and then you put those two together. You know something's on the way when you start to feel very, very sticky around here. 90 degrees in the forecast later on this afternoon. Now, like I was talking about, it's going to be warm. There's no doubt. Just like yesterday, it was pretty warm, but it wasn't extremely humid. And that keeps the rain on out of here. The main player of keeping the rain on out of here, this huge dome of higher pressure. Here's what's going on. This is the big picture and this is the setup that we have the next couple of days. As long as this is even close by, it doesn't have to be right over us. As long as it's close by, we're going to stay dry. And a lot of that warm air coming in from the south and southeast, or south and southwest, that is, it's from that high pressure system just barreling it on in. So we'll stay dry. There's nothing going on. But look back toward the west of us. That's knocking on our doorstep. That will be really late into the evening hours there on Thursday and Thursday night. As of right now, that's the timing of it. We'll see if it speeds up, but as of right now, it's say Thursday stays dry. So today, Wednesday, Thursday stays dry, and then you get off toward the evening and night. That's when the storms will be a possibility there in the forecast, especially central, north, and western zone. So Lexington, northbound Lexington, back toward the west, back toward Louisville. That's your best bet. Highs anywhere from 82 to 92, or 88 to 92, that is, all the way through your Thursday. So today and tomorrow, no chance of rain. Tomorrow, or Thursday, we're going to stay dry through the daylight hours as of right now, but it does look like toward the evening and night. That's when this rain moves on in. And it's not a lot. I wouldn't expect a lot of rain out of this. Friday, just a few storms that could affect some of these ball games going on Friday night. But Saturday continues to show all models point toward that front being over us on Saturday and giving storms likely there in the forecast. Remember, it's 60%, not 100%. So it's not a complete washout. Not everybody will see the rain, but if you do, some heavy downpours are expected out of that on Saturday. Once that pushes on through, it looks pretty good, though. Very okay. Nice Sunday. <laughs> all right. too. Just a quick okay. hitter. That's right. All right. Thank you, Micah. Mm -hmm. Well, Florida State beat Ole Miss last night in college football, and a young fan got the thrill of a lifetime. You might recall Seminoles wide receiver Travis Rudolph befriending sixth grader Bo Pask, who has autism. Rudolph sat down and had lunch with him during a community outreach program. That was last week. Well, the story immediately went viral, and the superstar streak is not over. Randolph invited Bo to last night's game. He met the entire team, and he got plenty of hugs and even his own personalized jersey. Bo watched FSU beat Ole Miss, by the way, 50, uh, 45 to 34. And so he's, he's the star now. He's probably had that jersey on since the game, too. <laughs> Wouldn't you think so? Yeah, probably, at, yeah. probably at school today. Well, the late, great Freddie Mercury gets a celestial honor. And both Bridget Jones and Renee Zellweger return to the big screen after a long hiatus. Chris Martinez has your eye on entertainment. Renee Zellweger walked the red carpet in London Monday night for the world premiere of Bridget Jones's Baby. Colin Firth is also back for the third installment of the popular franchise. Joining them for the first time is Grey's Anatomy star Patrick Dempsey. Oh, a boy! Oh, boy! A boy! Oh, boy! A boy! This time around, Bridget gets pregnant but doesn't know who the father is. It's so much fun to play a person who's so open and awkward and uh, self-depreciating, but it, uh, embraces herself anyway. This is the first Bridget Jones movie in six years. It opens in the U.S. September 16th. James Franco's latest directorial effort, In Dubious Battle, screened at the Venice Film Festival. The movie is based on the John Steinbeck novel about a labor strike during the Depression. I love literature, so I think part of my my place as a as a filmmaker is bringing these these classics to life but in with a contemporary spirit uh, and contemporary filmmaking techniques Robert Duvall and Vincent D'Onofrio co-star and legendary singer Freddie Mercury received a special honor Monday on what would have been his 70th birthday Queen guitarist Brian May says an asteroid near Jupiter has been named after the band's late frontman 
That's your Eye on Entertainment. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, coming right up, if you like front porch music, there will be plenty of it. Details about the Woodsong Gathering next on WKYT. And tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is 101 million. And tomorrow's Powerball jackpot is 186 million. We're so glad you're with us today. It's a two-day celebration of front porch music and the artists who make it. The Woodsongs Gathering is happening this month at historic Shaker Village in Harrodsburg. And we are very happy to welcome uh, Michael Jonathan. He's going to talk with us about that. I told it's you I was see you guys. listening Always to your show to Saturday you. night. All, fr all yeah. friends. Yes, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see you. We, we love our Woodsongs connection. We really Every do. Every Monday right here on your show yeah. and in the morning they come out. They love the experience and then you guys show them at, during during your noon, they're doing the 12:30 show. So you guys, WKYT has been so kind to the effort of the Woodsong Crew. Hey, you're great to send them. We get great exactly. artists like well, that, yeah, so that, we that, love it. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about this front porch music, this big event you have coming up. You know, the music business has changed incredibly. Who knew five years ago that the biggest retailer of CDs in America was going to be a restaurant chain? Yeah, Cracker Barrel. Right. Yeah, it sells Walmart and Best Buy. There's no record stores to put albums in new cars are coming out with no CD players in them even computers don't have CD slots anymore so it's been very difficult for artists to view music as a career mm -hmm. and I created the Woodsong Front Porch Association to be honest and say look you're not gonna be Bob Dylan you're not gonna be Garth Brooks you're not gonna sell a million records but what do you do with this passion this spirit mm -hmm. this thing and front, the front porch used to be the grand stage of, of America. They don't even put front porches on homes anymore. Oh, but front porches are great. Oh, I agree with you. Well, and Kentucky's fortunate because so many homes do have that. But I created the Woodsongs Front Porch Association. It's a nonprofit that brings art and music into schools. We're, we call the members Song Farmers. Isn't that a neat name? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, absolutely. And this year, the gathering of Song Farmers is going to be at Shaker Village. And Beautiful we're, setting. Oh, my oh. goodness. We're having, uh, like, Friday night music and art and lectures and concerts and workshops, and the public's invited. Uh, you become a member of the WFPA, and we give you five free tickets. Oh, wow. Five free tickets. You become a member, you get five free tickets. Saturday night, we're having a big, old-fashioned, old-timey barn dance. Shaker Village has this massive, gorgeous barn. Uh, Raymond McLean from the McLean Family Band and the students of Moorhead, the Kentucky Center of Traditional Music, yeah. is going to be the band for the barn dance. That's great. Oh, but, that's but everyone from Pat Flynn from Newgrass Revival to Banana from the Young Bloods, who was on WKYT, mm -hmm. um, this is a celebration of the spirit of front porch, real, organic music for people whose love for music supersedes the fact that they can't have a livelihood with it. Yeah. As you have said so often Sounds on your perfect. show, you don't have to be famous, you have to be very good. Or right. just not suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's going to be a, that will be a perfect, perfect We hope folks gathering. get it on the calendar so, because it yeah. is the 20... September 23 yeah. and 24, yeah. Shaker Village, the Woodsongs Gathering, the public is invited. Bring the family. There's going to be kids' art stuff, and then we have a, a seedling stage for kid performers. Yeah. The world champion banjo player is 15 years old. He's going to be there. Perfect. Very good. Michael Thank Jonathan, you so thank much. You Always good me. to see you. Thank you for having me, guys. I'll keep it right here this mid morning. Going to check in with a Mr. Food Test Kitchen next and see what's cooking up on your Tuesday. From the Mr. Food Test Kitchen today, an easy way to get dinner on the table without doing a lot of work or ending up with a lot of dishes. That sounds great. Uh, right, it does. And sausage sheet pan supper, <laughs> it all cooks up at once on one baking sheet. For years, one pot meals have been super popular since they allow us to throw everything in one pot while they do their thing. That means less cleanup and less hassles. But now there's a new trend that's sweeping the country. It's called sheet pan suppers. The principle is basically the same, but since everything gets cooked on a sheet pan, it cooks faster. Let me show you what I mean. We start by combining some olive oil with a packet of Italian dressing mix and a touch of pepper. Once that's mixed, we add in some creamer potatoes that we've cut in half, along with a chunked up onion and some fresh green beans that we've trimmed. and we dump that on a sheet pan. 
After baking it for about 15 minutes, we take it out and place a pound or so of Italian sausage that we've cut into chunks onto the same pan and back into the oven it goes. When everything is cooked through and all the flavors mesh together, it's done. Come dinner time, all we have to do is set the pan on the table and let everyone dig in. And since it has our meat, veggie, and potato all in one pan, just think how easy cleanup will be. To get the recipe, all you have to do is go to our website and type in sausage sheet pan supper. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a trendy new way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm. <laughs> looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Not bad. Okay, let's look at the weather and see what's going on the rest of the day. 90 degrees this afternoon, and that will go for tomorrow. So today and tomorrow, pretty much the same days. Then we have Thursday. Much of your day stays dry. The timing on it right now, which is subject to change, but the timing on it looks late into Thursday. We're talking evening and nighttime hours. Then we look toward the weekend. You saw a little bit better chance of rain. We're going to yeah. go over that coming up in there. Okay. All right. Thank you. I do want to thank you for joining us for WKYT here at mid morning. And we have a lot of stories in progress for our noon news. We'll see you back at noon.